Hi, hi, Luis. I'm doing, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So, okay, congratulations on your uh, new film, Disappear Completely. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, so I, I found this uh, film um, fascinating. It's because, uh, you know, I, I, I don't hear or know about too many films that basically utilize the idea of, uh, the, you know, all the senses, but where the original idea came from um, for you for, for this film? Well, actually, the original idea came from uh, Ricardo Aguado, who's the screenwriter, the original screenwriter. He wrote the screenplay like 20 years ago. Uh, well, he started working on the screenplay like 20 years ago, and then he wanted to do a film about uh, witchcraft because he had a friend who lived near. There's a town here in Mexico called uh, Catemaco, which is a famous uh, witchcraft town. There's a lot of witches there, and um, like the main the main hub for for witches and he had a friend who lived near nearby so he started working on the idea of how how what what could be the worst thing that would happen to you like the worst curse that could happen to you and 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 this is how he came up with with this he, he thought for, it would be like very bad not to see but it would be worse not to have any senses at all so when when you were uh, making this film, do you see this as sort of like a a film in the horror genre itself? Well, actually, actually, I saw it first as a like a thrill, like a supernatural thriller. My my yeah, I, I my initial feelings were were that like I wanted to make a, a supernatural thriller, obviously with elements like horror elements and. But not necessarily like a like a horror film, though it can be. And after a few festivals, um, people start telling me, "Oh, you know, it's like a genre bending film, and you're it could be like categorized like in the folk horror kind of film." So yeah, I, I guess it can it can play within these different genres. I, I don't I I think film doesn't have to be like one specific genre. So it can be many. It has drama thriller, horror, folk horror, and whatnot. Well, well said, well said. So um, in in the story-wise, because, uh, because your character Santiago doesn't lose all of the senses all at the same time, but but how yeah. did you want to basically approach his, his journey, basically getting tortured, losing senses, at a time obviously you don't you don't want to start off with something like sight <laughs> and, yeah. and that ruins the whole, the rest of the movie <laughs> yeah you know that that's interesting because the 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 first version of the screenplay i read before i started working with the with the screenwriter he didn't i mean this is kind of a spoilery but he he didn't lose all of the senses so and and, and the ones he lost were like the the minor, the minor ones, just <laughs> quoting that. Um, it like the the smell, the the taste, and and the, the, the what was the, how, how do you call it? like touch. Pat, touch, yeah. Um, and so we started when we when I came on board and we started developing the idea of, of losing the five senses. We started like do it uh, to think it, it had to be gradually, you know, like starting with the least important sense or the, the most important and the, the fact that he's a photographer and that he uses his sight for his work kind of was a poetic thing for us and um, and yeah the idea that that it was one sense at a time a day like one sense daily kind of kind of helped us um uh, make him torture him as you say like make him figure out slowly that it could be, you know, like this could be something medical, something uh, in my mind or in his mind or something else, something more uh, supernatural. So that's how we wanted to play with it. I, I, I found it fascinating the fact that you also brought in a little bit of science um, into uh, this film because I guess uh, in reality, there are people that actually do lose senses in its own way. Yeah, 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 definitely. So that, yeah, this is, I mean, 
unfortunately, as you say, um, yeah, we wanted to make it make it realistic. We wanted to to make it like, like if we were doing this, we wanted we wanted it to be like this could happen to anyone. It could be like for any for any given reason, you know. Yes. Now, in order for this film to work, you have to have a great actor that could uh, yeah. that could act like he's losing each each sense, especially since we we don't feel it in, in his own way. Tell us about uh, get, getting Harold to uh, to portray uh, Santiago and why he was perfect for this role. Yeah, you know the the casting process was very difficult because we started uh, pre production or development on this film like in twenty nineteen. So we got it right. I mean, COVID got us right in the middle of, of the whole thing. And so we started, we stopped for a year, but we had begun the casting process with our casting director. And the thing is, everything changed with COVID, you know? And so we started doing the casting process over Zoom. And this was very difficult for me because you're not, I mean, you don't get the, feeling of the person you know like if you're with them like you, you need like a you, you have like a a feeling like a chemistry you need to to have with the with the actor when you meet or with the person when you meet them so you know over the the screen was very difficult and you don't you don't see their size or their height so it's like maybe they're very small or very big and and you're imagining you just see like this exactly so we started doing this uh audition process with videos at first and then over Zoom. But finally we had like like finalists. I, I didn't I didn't know personally Harold. I had heard of him and seen a few of his movies, but it wasn't until I, I met with him and saw the work he did on Zero Zero Zero, this Amazon Amazon Prime series, that I, I thought this this is this guy's perfect for the film. I mean he's the he's the one who has to do it um so yeah i mean he was he had like a very important presence and the, the the choices he made as an actor during the casting process were were very interesting and i mean it was his presence i we we it just like like we had this feeling me and the producer said this is the guy you know like the like the <laughs> mulholland driver is in that film and, and then he said this is the girl like this is the guy <laughs> Now, um, well, you know the science science on this thing is uh pretty realistic, and um, and your your original screenwriter, uh, you know, was basing this off of witchcraft. How much, uh, when you did these scenes for, I want to say witchcraft or exorcism in 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 this case, uh, how how much did you basically have to fictionalize, or how close it is to to the real thing in in the culture? Well, actually. Everything is very close to the the real thing. I mean, we did a lot of research from from when, since when we were writing the screenplay until the product, uh, like we were in, on production. Uh, for example, that scene you're talking about, the like a ritual exorcism slash exorcism scene. Um, we there's a lot of. Uh, videos online where you can see a lot of rituals here in Mexico and in South America and uh, there's some of of those in uh, from Africa as well but we based mostly on on the things that happen here in Mexico and also we've been to I mean I haven't personally had like a a, a cleansing like that or a ritual like that but I have gone to these witches healers um uh, and had like the the whole thing, and 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 there's a market here in in Mexico called uh, Mercado Sonora, where you can go and which is where he goes in the film. He goes to this market, and there's like, oh hey, a cleanse here, or or buy this. Um, you need like a love potion or a work potion or whatever. That that those things are real. I mean, that's the real place. We're filming the actual. Uh, places where they sell those stuff and the people who are working there are, are real so it's it's very real and 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 even the the um, the curse which might sound a bit uh, 
supernatural. I heard a story about a friend whose grandma grandmother went blind after performing like a cleansing. So, I mean, we start, I mean, obviously it depends if you're a skeptic or not, but here in Mexico, I can say that the majority of the people believe in, in this stuff. It's like, if, if you're having like a bad day or, or several bad days or like a bad streak of luck or whatever, people will say, why don't you go see a witch or why don't you get a cleanse or, or a cleansing or, or whatever. It's like very common for us to hear this stuff. Not necessarily that everyone believes in this stuff, but, but it is very common. And even the most, like the things that are in the movie that are in the, in the bottom layers of the film that not necessarily are, are the main plot, but it's like underneath the political stuff there's those are real i mean those are based on real cases from mexico so there's a politician that uh, went through all that stuff and and had like this uh, ritual with sacrifices and all that maybe the only fictional thing we did in, in our version of the exorcism was, was with the sacrifice but that also happens maybe not necessarily in the lower level kind of thing but it, it also happens so yeah i mean Depends on what on what you believe, but uh, those things, all of them, happen here in Mexico. So, are you a skeptic? I could say I was more of a skeptic before. Not so much now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean the things I've heard and seen. Yeah. <laughs> well said. Well, let let me uh, start wrapping things up. Uh, um, I, I don't want to go into, you know, the spoiler, particularly to the ending, but yeah. what, how much of a debate did you actually have on how to end this film with uh, Santiago? Well, that's a very interesting question. When I first re the, read the screenplay, the first version of it, the first draft, um, the ending was completely different, as I, as I said previously. But in my mind, I knew how it had to end. Like the way it ends is the way I thought of it the first time I, I came in contact with this material. And it was very difficult because the producer and especially the sound designer were a bit skeptic on the idea of finishing the film like it does. And I was like, no, 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 it has to be this way because I want to make like a, like a movie with, sensory sensory i don't know how to say it in, in english like sensory like kind con of sensory con consequences or attraction or something like that like, like the experience of the, sens the sensory like, experiences okay yeah, sensory experience. and um yeah i wanted to make that uh, try to make the film and, and make the 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 audience kind of feel like santiago or just make make them feel uneasy in a way so i thought the best way to do that was to especially finish the, the film like that and and obviously it's a bit open-ended but not necessarily because it really does close i mean it's it's a close ending but it's an open ending i mean it's a close ending that feels like an open end but but it's not necessarily an open ending film and um and yeah, the producer was, as I said, a skeptic. But I, we had like the several uh, thoughts of the film, and and I would, you know, just show it, and he was like, "No, yeah, this is good, this is good." And at first, he was like, with the sound at the end, he was like, "No, no, no, it can't be like this." And I was like, "No, no, no, let's let's try, it, let's try, it, let's try." It. And, and oh yeah, this is good, this is good. And, and eventually, it just even the the distributor at, at first were like. No, 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 you can't end the film like that. No, there's no way. But it, I was like, no, it has to be this way. So it, it was like a, you know, like a give and take kind of thing. But I, I knew from the start that it had to be that way. Well said, well said. Luis, well, thank you very much uh, for carrying this conversation. I I am certain everyone's going to be um, showing some empathy for us, Santiago, because it's always, it's always, how do you say, horrifying to uh, to be a character at the wrong place at the wrong time <laughs> when yeah. it comes to uh, 
to these things. Yeah, on Ferdinand, yeah. Even though he's like uh, not a not a very nice person, right? Even though he's not a very nice person, I think people can empathize with him in a way throughout the film. That is true. That is true. Well, hopefully we get to do this again. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.